I came from the mortal world. Chapter 16 The Iron Lock Out of Curiosity Zi stepped forward to find out what was happening over there. Eventually, he saw a pyramid-shaped building with a glittering golden plate hanging on the top of the gate lecture room. Is it a lecture room for Wu Dao? Zi wondered. Walking several steps closer, Zi found an introductory essay sculptured on the wall, which narrated the establishment date and purpose, etc. Definitely, this kind of essay was tedious, but Zi was quite interested in it. Actually, the lecture room was an official building established by the Emperor of Yu. He built it in an attempt to narrow the resource gap between rich and poor cultivators, anyone who was born in. A rich family, for instance, would certainly receive the best education in Wudao, while those aspiring, yet poor cultivators, could only learn by themselves, without any effective guidance. Therefore, many of the poor cultivators would encounter bottlenecks they weren't able to overcome, for the long road of cultivation in Wudao had many realms that could only be achieved after breaking through a bottleneck. The Emperor of Yu had built these lecture rooms throughout his territory, though it might have only been a political strategy to win credibility among the poor people. It really brought concrete benefits to those sincere Wudao cultivators, especially to the newcomers. Zi Yu felt tears of happiness coming up and was about to cry. Out in joy, due to the information on this wall inscription, it was true that Zi Yi had entered the peak state of a forged body, but his theoretical basis for Wu Dao was next to non-existent. Before, diligence and practice had brought him to this point. However, he never actually knew anything about Wu Dao itself. What he had learned so far was from his Saifu, Liao Chen, who taught Zi Yi out of gratitude. Any rudimentary knowledge or anecdotes in Wu Dao were out of reach for Zi Yi. So he was. Desperate to learn more, during the three-day recovery period in the Mu family, Zi Yi began to consider his future. Right now, there were two main tasks. Firstly, he had to kill Zhou Daokian. Secondly, he wished to return the scripture to the heaven, Zen Temple, which was Liao Chen's will in order to complete these two tasks. Zi Yi had to improve his cultivation in Wudao. He set himself a short-term goal. To surpass the peak state and enter into the next realm, an ocean of qi, at his current stage, Zi Yi wasn't capable enough to kill Shirong, let alone his father, Daokian. Therefore, he really hoped that in this lecture room he would encounter some experienced mentors. Because right now, Zi Yi was in dire need of a teacher. In the middle of the lecture room, there stood a gigantic Iron Maid lock. Suddenly, a man in plain clothing stepped forward. The greatest of gratitude to our emperor for providing us with this lecture room. Where we can discuss, compete, and absorb. Knowledge of Wu Dao. We're all born mundane, yet our love for Wu Dao will never wither. Let's show our emperor that we're worthy of this place. Let's practice ten. No. A hundred times harder than those privileged cultivators. After his introductory. Speech, the man in plain clothing pointed at the iron lock and said, let's begin. Once he stepped away from the iron lock, a man in green clothing casually walked in front of the giant lock. After he had finished stretching and his warming up, the man in green clothing grabbed the lock with a loud roar. The muscles on his arms became visible due to the great strength he exerted. As expected, he successfully lifted the lock over his head. Hooray, the room exploded with exclamations and clapping. A few seconds later, the lock fell back on the floor with a thud. The man in green clothing bowed to everyone, with his hands folded in front of his chest. Everyone's passion was ignited by this first challenger. After the first there, were at least another 50 people who attempted to lift the lock, but only less than half of them managed to lift this iron lock up after he had observed for a couple of minutes. Zi Yi figured out that the iron lock was about 250 kilograms in. Wait, which was exactly the threshold for entering the level of a forged body. Only those who passed the test were qualified to participate in the class. Later, another 10 people volunteered to lift the lock. Well, only three passed, the man in. Plain clothing said, anyone else, time is limited if there's no one else. We will call it a day, oh. 
I have some words to say for those who didn't pass. Never ever give up. If you failed this year, try again next year. As long as you never quit, sooner or later you will be a member of the lecture room. As soon as the man in plain clothing finished his speech, he casually lifted the lock with his left hand. Everyone was astounded by this show of strength. Let me have a try. Finally, Zhu Yi stepped forward. Now everyone's attention was focused on Zhu Yi, as he was the only stranger here. Hibiscus Town was rather small, so everyone here was familiar with each other. Zhu Yi was obviously the only exception, as he had only lived here for three days. Who the hell is this guy? He's not supposed to be in our lecture room. Look at you, stranger. You are too skinny. Have you really made yourself believe you can lift the iron lock, Vasco? This man is not even an inhabitant of our town. Please send him away. You know that we don't cultivate with outsiders. The room was quickly filled with noisy complaints, as if there were dozens of flies buzzing around. Most of these villagers were far from accomplished in Wu Dao, but they had obtained certain accomplishments in bullying newcomers. Hello, everyone. Let me introduce myself. I'm a passionate cultivator in Wu Dao. I have been cultivating for some time now, but I've realized that the further I move forward, the less I. No, you know, I'm a man full of questions about Wu Dao. I'm so eager to find these answers. Since we're all Wu Dao cultivators, why won't you be so generous as to let me in? Besides, our emperor founded this building in an attempt to benefit all. Poor cultivators, regardless of their origins, if you insist in deterring me, I'm afraid you're going against the will of our emperor. Zhu Yi gracefully bowed after his persuasive remarks. Zhu Yi was quite articulate in front of so many people. This might have something to do with the previous life of Zhu Yi's soul. He used to be a high-ranking commander whose talents stood out amongst millions upon millions of people. At the same time. The original Zhu Yi before the new soul transferred had entered into his body was also talented in various areas such as history and classics. The combination of the two Zhu Yi's had dramatically boosted his abilities, so it was no wonder that he was so eloquent. Despite the fact that most of the people here were hostile towards him, the man in plain clothing was actually touched by Zhu Yi's remarks, especially when he had mentioned the Emperor of Yu. He meditated for a while. And then replied, "What a persuasive speech! You are right. We shouldn't expel you from this lecture room, but we have rules here. Only those who can lift this lock are allowed to join the class. Since you dare to step into this room, I bet you are quite something. So please move ten steps away from the lock, and I will throw the lock towards you. If you don't miss and manage to catch the lock and hold it steadily, then you're welcome to join us." On the one hand, since Zhu Yi had mentioned the emperor, the man in plain clothing was compelled to be generous to him, as he didn't want to hurt the reputation of this lecture room. While on the other hand, looking at those furious warriors, he didn't want to displease them either. Therefore, he came up with a win-win solution to show kindness to Zhu Yi, but set a higher bar for him. Indeed, the man in plain clothing was a well-known figure in this town. That was because he was one of the few in this town who had achieved the middle state of a forged body. If he threw the lock towards Zhu Yi, the momentum of the flying lock, together with its original weight, would certainly exceed 250 kilograms. Would this newcomer successfully catch the lock, or would he make a fool of himself? People applauded for the upcoming show, as most of them predicted that Zhu Yi would never catch the heavy iron lock. It was simply impossible. At least for them. At least for them. I came from the mortal world. Chapter Seventeen: The Origin of Strength. Please don't use all your strength, or I won't be able to catch it. D whispered to the man in plain clothing, as if it was a real challenge for him. As requested, D retreated ten steps away. He then squatted a little bit, showing a ready pose. He didn't want to show his true strength in case the Zhou family would somehow get wind of it. He acted as if he was intimidated by the test, cautiously waiting for the lock to be thrown. Here you go. The man in plain clothing held the lock with a single hand and then threw it towards Zhu Yi with a roar. 
Do Yi spread his arms and embrace the incoming lock successfully. However, he retreated several steps due to the impact of the heavy lock. Finally, he steadily held the lock for several seconds until his face turned a deep red color. Everyone was taken aback in shock. Zhu Yi was a lot stronger than they had originally thought he would be. Not bad. Even though you trembled slightly, you did it. As a beginner in the preliminary period of a forged body, your strength is extraordinary. Hi man, welcome, you are in. The man in plain clothing congratulated Zhu Yi, the pretended nervousness and shivers made the man in plain clothing believe that Zhu Yi was just at the beginning stages of Wu Dao. Plus, as far as he knew, all the students here were mere newcomers to Wu Dao. Anyone who had entered the middle or peak state wouldn't bother to come here. After all, in the lecture room, they only provided students with some rudimentary knowledge of Wu Dao. Nevertheless, Zhu Yi was an exception. Thank you for your leniency. Or I would have been squashed by the weight of that lock. Zhu Yi bowed to the man in plain clothing. Quick, go to the classroom. Teacher Joe is a pundit with bad temperament. If you are late, he won't be lenient to you, the man in plain clothing urged Ziyi. So Ziyi ran in the direction the man in plain clothing had pointed him in. When he reached the classroom, he found that all the seats were empty. Actually, all of the students stood in front of a wall, staring at the portraits hanging on it. There were 20 portraits on the wall, which were considered to be the heroes of Hibiscus Town of the last 200 years. Most of them had obtained the state of an ocean of chi, which was why everyone here looked up to them on the wall. Their life experience and past glories had all been sculptured using condensed words. This really encouraged the aspiring new students in Wudao because they could see their future through these idols. Dang, the door slammed open. Before a hoary old man in ragged clothing entered, he swaggered into the Classroom, with one hand holding a gourd-shaped wine kettle. Soon, the whole classroom was filled with the fragrance of wine. The classroom turned chaotic. As the new students started discussing the appearance of their teacher, obviously, they were disappointed by it. Some of them even sighed to express their dissatisfaction. Instead of complaining like the others, Ji chose a seat in the front and silently sat there. He actually liked the old man's nature and unrestrained style, which he believed to be the reflection of the old man's advanced ability. Bang, bang, bang. The old man beat the ruler against the iron desk to arouse everyone's attention. Hey, cheer up. It's a blessing for you to be in my class. Look at your long faces. Oh, this is such a joy kill. You little bastards. Now I'm no longer in the mood to drink, let alone to teach. You have all let me down, today. I'll allow you newcomers to ask me only 10 questions. Once all the questions have been answered, class will be over. Teacher Joe was infuriated by the student's unfriendly response. He then uncovered the lid of his kettle and gulped like an ox, in contrast with the solemnity in the classroom. Teacher Joe's behavior was rather undignified. As far as I know, anyone in the forged body state will boast a healthy and robust body. But look at you, Teacher Zhao, frankly, you are a mere bag of bones. I bet you aren't even a Wudao cultivator, are you? One student rose up and expressed his suspicions towards Teacher Zhao. Everyone was astounded by the courage of this student. However, the other students couldn't help but agree and soon the whole classroom was chaotic again. Undeniably, judging from his appearance, it was hard to believed that teacher Zhao was a cultivator in Wudao. But if he really didn't have any achievements in Wudao, how would he dare to stand here and impart his knowledge? Everyone expected teacher Zhao to be outraged by the impolite student. While on the contrary, he smiled and enjoyed a sip of wine before he replied, You know what? When I was cultivating Wudao, you were probably still in the womb of your mummy. Okay, boy. You wasted one question, Anyone else? The students were all surprised by Teacher Joe's response, especially when he counted this as one of the 10 questions. Quiet, please. No more chaos. Or else the class will be over, Teacher Joe said. As he was rather annoyed by the noisy chatter, the students finally sat straight 
and stop talking. They knew it was pointless for them to confront their teacher. They were the forgotten group in society and they lacked the resources to continue on the path of cultivation. Meanwhile, teacher Joe was appointed by the government and was supposed to offer them help. It was like a beggar who received some food he didn't really like, but he was afraid to show his preference to the donator. It was exactly the same situation. Zhu Yi stood up and bowed slightly before gently saying, I have a question for you, Teacher Joe. Where lies the origin of our strength? The students were embarrassed by Zhu Yi's naive question. Because they all knew that your strength came from your body, and the further you cultivated, the stronger your body would become. They blamed Zhu Yi for wasting this opportunity with such a dumb question. Meanwhile, Teacher Joe was meditating over the question as he put his wine kettle on the desk. He had been a teacher in the lecture room for nearly 20 years now, yet no one had ever raised such a question. He pondered for quite some time, trying to come up with an appropriate answer. It truly sounded like a simple question, which everyone could casually provide an answer to. However, when you thought deeper on this question, you would be baffled. You could even say that the simpler the question was, the harder the answer would be. I can't handle this question. He finally replied in a low voice. His reply made the other. Students even more bewildered. Given that Teacher Joe's had 20 years of experience in the lecture room, the students chose to trust him. If he was really not able to answer this seemingly easy question, then the question itself was evidently not. As simple as they had thought, actually, it's a good question. Though I don't know the correct answer either way. I'll answer your question based on my personal experience. Teacher Joe was actually an honest guy who didn't pretend to be well. Informed about subjects he knew little about, no problem. I'm all ears. I know that we keep gaining strength in the cultivating process of a forged body. But what if we surpass that stage and reach the highest point, the peak state, ZE? appreciated the straightforwardness of Teacher Joe and gave some further explanation about his question. I came from the mortal world. Editor note. Hey guys, quick message in chapter 8 we called one of the stages freezing blood. However, we've realized this is not accurate. It's been changed and from now on will be called liquidation of chi. Enjoy. The chapter, chapter 18, enlightening remarks the whole class was silent. All of the students here were beginners, who only aspired to learn the rudimentary knowledge of a forged body. Such as techniques, the flow of qi, the most, effective herbs to advanced cultivation, etc. Something like the peak state of a forged body was something they could only dream about to think what was beyond this realm. Was something beyond their comprehension. However, now that Zi had brought this question up, everyone felt enlightened as they began thinking of the whole picture of Wu Dao, rather than merely tunnel vision on the state of a forged body, as cultivators. They all wished to make progress day by day. No one wanted to be left behind. Within the stage of a forged body, the cultivation of the body was the origin of their strength. But what if they finally surpassed this level? The classroom was silent. As they were all pondering on Zui's seemingly simple, yet, Difficult question. Teacher Joe raised his brows a little bit and calmly said with a rare and solemn expression, I have figured out the general answer to your question. What you seem most curious about is how to obtain more strength after having reached the peak state of a forged body. Actually, your concern would disappear once you've taken the next step. As you all know, there are four stages to unlock the shackles of this mortal world. The forged body is simply one of these stages. In each stage, we have different techniques to cultivate and gather strength. You know what the four stages are, correct? They're namely a forged body, an ocean of chi, the liquidation of chi and a grateful soul. You may see from their names that they're a reflection of their personal state, either physically or spiritually. At the peak state of a forged body, you'll have ox's skin and iron-like bones. The strength you can exert will be equivalent to that of one ox. After you surpass this stage, you'll have entered into the next realm, an ocean of chi. 
Just as its name implies, the chi in your body will form an ocean in your danshan. You'll be able to fight with your mind rather than with your hands or any other part of your body. It'll be an amazing stage. Indeed, in this stage, you'll still need to cultivate your body, but not to strengthen your skin and bones. Instead, you will cultivate your bone marrow into a frost state and your blood into a thick liquid as for the last two stages i don't possess any definite answers to tell you the truth i haven't reached these stages myself so it is beyond me however if you like i could give you a simple overview he paused for a second as he looked at z and then continued the so-called liquidation state i'm fairly certain that it refers to the liquidation of your chi you will train the organs inside your chest, forging them into a more resilient state. Finally, a grateful soul is the last realm. Represents the end of the limitations of your physical body and you will start to absorb the energy from the heavens. You have to be absolutely devout in this state. In order to successfully purify your soul, the detailed explanation by teacher. Joe, though combined with evidence and predictions, was enlightening learning material for the students. Di Yi was especially overwhelmed. As the doubts that had nagged him all this time had been like an insurmountable mountain. But now it had. Suddenly collapsed, for a while, silence dominated the classroom as the students were digesting the wide range knowledge that was bombarded onto them by Teacher Joe. Is there anything wrong with my lecturing? Why is everyone suddenly so? Quiet, Teacher Joe was baffled by the awkward atmosphere. Teacher, it really surprised us that you are in the state of an ocean of chi. A round-faced guy blurted out in astonishment. When Teacher Joe said that he had no experience in the last two realms, the students felt like they were hit by a thunderbolt because they never expected that this hoary little man had surpassed a forged body. This came as a huge surprise to them. Aside from Z. Everyone here was only at the beginning. Stages of a forged body. For them, they weren't even confident in reaching the peak state of a forged body, let alone stepping into the realm of an ocean of chi. Zhu Yi was probably the only one who didn't make any fuss over it. He had previously fought with Xirong, who had also reached an ocean of chi, so he knew quite clearly how powerful it was. However, he treated each word from Teacher Joe as a gem and sculptured them deep inside his heart. Bullshit, how can you consider an ocean of chi to be a big deal? Teacher Joe angrily retorted, Even if you've reached the final stage, a grateful soul, you are still living in this damn mortal world, listen. If don't have the mere courage to obtain the state of an ocean of chi, just get out of my class, Teacher Joe continued, indeed, the verbally passionate teacher Joe had his own miserable story. However, he wasn't interested in sharing this with his students. Yes, he had obtained an ocean of chi, but that was nearly 20 years ago. Now, sadly, he was like a disabled person in Wudao, as his dantian, the basis for cultivating Wudao, had been damaged in a fierce battle. Thanks to his solid theoretical knowledge in Wudao, as well as his presentation skills, he had finally managed to make a living in the lecture room. Teacher Joe didn't wish to share his negative emotions, so he kept the bitter remorse to himself. D finally broke the silence and stood. As he asked another question, My apologies, teacher. Joe, but I've got another question. During an intense fight, what's the most important factor, strength or speed? Which one will dominate in a fight? And how about battle techniques? Are they vital in a fight? In addition, based on what you've just told us, one won't have more than an ox's strength in the peak state of a forged body. Yet I've heard stories that some cultivators are able to reach three oxen strength in the peak state. How do you explain that? This question had puzzled Yi. Ever since he had fought with Elder Feng, who had exerted the tranquil fist, which was three oxen strength, Although Zi had survived this attack, it had been an extremely close call. As his armor had been his saving grace, he still had lingering. Fears on the fatal strength of that fist. During Zi's cultivation, all he knew was how to cultivate around the clock, in the hope that something magic would happen to his strength and speed. 
It never occurred to him that techniques would be so powerful. That was until he met Elder Feng. Di Yi was, indeed, a little bit envious of Elder Feng's mind-boggling tranquil fist. Look at you, diligent, discerning, and cautious. Your great material for Wu Dao, teacher Zhou glanced at Di Yi and then enjoyed a sip of his wine. Okay, let me answer your question. Firstly, never forget to treat strength and speed as your top priority. You know, in front of absolute strength. Any Shui technique would be easily overshadowed. In other words, never underestimate the importance of strength and speed. Secondly, we occasionally need techniques to overcome our shortcomings in strength or speed. Look, absolute strength is not an easy thing to achieve. When you encounter someone in a higher realm, what would you do? Your strength and speed won't help you out. Only techniques can narrow the gap between you and your enemy anyway. You're all in the state of a forged body and you'll hardly have any chance to compete with those in a higher realm. That's why I consider, to some extent, absolute strength a pseudo-proposition. Only a minority of the talented cultivators will be lucky enough to gain absolute strength for normal cultivators. Like you, I suggest that techniques are an effective way to improve your ability. Or let me put it this way, techniques, strength and speed are an integral part in the cultivation process of Wu Dao. None of them should be singled out as the most important element. Important element. I came from the mortal world. Chapter 19. Being recruited, Zi sat quietly, absorbing the knowledge imparted by Teacher Zhou, as if he was a sponge in water. Teacher Zhou glanced at Zi and smiled before he continued, it is fair to say that techniques are a perfect combination of strength and speed. During the thousands of years of history, masters in Wu Dao have developed exquisite techniques that would enhance or even surpass the power of strength and speed. What you just mentioned is theoretically true. The strength of one ox is approximately the power of a cultivator at the peak state. In a real fight, however, if you can properly use techniques, then it isn't impossible to reach three oxen strength at the same peak. State, perhaps this is a little bit too difficult for you to comprehend. Let me give you an example. Have you ever seen the cargo ships that pass by our village in the river? No matter how heavy the goods they carry are, it takes them little effort to load them on or off. Do you know why? It is due to the pulleys, which are installed along the mast. With these pulleys, it's possible to lift goods that far outweigh its own weight. In this case, techniques in Wu Dao are analogous to these. Pulleys, they both increase efficiency. In conclusion, strength is the basis while techniques are the tools. A solid basis with advanced tools is the perfect combination. A peal of applause burst out following teacher Zhou's intelligent remarks. Zhu, Yi felt enlightened as if beholding the sun blazing through the clouded sky. Teacher Zhou must have been a master in Wu Dao. Or else he wouldn't be able to spontaneously deliver such a comprehensive speech. When Zhu Yi was about to raise another question, someone else in the classroom stood up. It had become obvious that Teacher Zhou was a kind of pundit in the realm of Wu Dao. Hence they all desired to seize this golden opportunity to clear up their doubts regarding Wu Dao. One after another raised their hands as if there was a race going on in the classroom, where originally it seemed like Zi Yi would be able to ask freely. Now he had to fight with his classmates to be able to raise his own questions within one quarter of an hour. Teacher Zhou had answered all the questions from the other students. Eventually, Teacher Zhou snatched the wine kettle and left the classroom without saying a word. Looking at the back of Teacher Zhou, Zi Yi was actually a little bit Disappointed, as he was still left with a variety of urgent unanswered questions, he remained in the classroom and started meditating as a solemn expression covered his face. Soon, dusk was about to arrive, the leaves of the bamboo trees outside. The window were rustling in the wind. Ziyi suddenly turned around as he felt a whiff of fresh air coming through the window. He realized that all his classmates had already left. Zuyi stood up and was about to leave as well when someone knocked 
On the classroom door, the man in plain clothing, who had tested Zhu Yi before he was allowed to enter the lecture room, entered and smiled at Zhu Yi. Hey, brother. I was waiting for you out in the hall, but the other students said that you were still in the classroom. What's up? Zhu Yi asked, as he was rather curious. Don't worry. I've got some good news for you. Oh, by the way, where are you from? I mean, what is your hometown? The man in plain clothing kept smiling, as if Zhu Yi was his friend. I can't wait to hear the good news. Please, just tell me. Zhu Yi intentionally avoided the hometown question, even though he looked calm on the outside. He was actually terrified of being recognized. As Zhu Yi revealed his name and hometown, it was like committing suicide, as he thought that the Zhou family would be ceaselessly searching for him. The Zhou family was so influential that it'd be easy for them to find Zhu Yi. Once someone provided them any clues about Zhu Yi's whereabouts, hey, you don't have to worry. I generally know what happened to you. Elder Mu rescued you three days ago, and you've since stayed with his family. The man in plain clothing said kindly, "General Gu, you can read my mind." Zhu Yi replied with pretended happiness as he was preparing for the worst. Okay, I really don't have much time or interest in knowing your personal details. I am here to invite you to join the plain clothing unit in Hibiscus Town," General Gu replied. "Plain clothing unit? Sorry, I don't understand you," Zhu Yi said as he was rather confused. General Gu stared at Zhu Yi for a couple of seconds. He then remembered that Zhu Yi was not a local and that he was most likely not familiar with this town quite yet. So he. Try to explain. The plain clothing unit is a group of people who are responsible for safeguarding our town. You know, in our country, apart from the national forces, there are various local guards. Among them, they're categorized into five ranks, which are represented by the clothing they wear: gold, purple, black, white, and green. The gold clothing unit works for the empire. Purple clothing unit works for vassal states. Black clothing unit works for states and prefectures. White clothing unit works for provincial governments. Hibiscus Town is affiliated to the White Horse County, which is a humble place. That's why we wear plain clothing, as we belong to none of the aforementioned rankings. Actually, I'm the leader of our Hibiscus Towns unit today. I was rather impressed by your abilities in the test, and I know you're someone carrying great potential. We sincerely hope that you'd be willing to join us. Do you slightly relaxed as he understood that this man had nothing to do with the Joe family? If he joined their group, they'd most likely not further investigate his background. Moreover, since the unit was an official organization, they keep every employee's personal file. If Do you submitted a false name, they would keep it as his official name. This was an expedient way to hide himself from the Zhou family. Thinking it over for a little bit, Zhu Yi decided that it was in his best interest to take this man up on his offer. So he replied with a positive yes. I'd be honored to become a part of your unit. General Gu burst out in laughter. He was overjoyed, as his unit had been undermanned for a long time. Now. A new member with great abilities and potential would join and fill the gap, brother. I swear that you won't regret your decision. Let me introduce myself. I am Gu Jianming. He introduced himself as he patted Zhu Yi on the back, expressing his excitement. Originally, General Gu considered Zhu Yi to be a man with some strength, as he had passed the test. However, at that time, he didn't have any plans on dragging him into his unit. That was. Until the end of class, when everyone was discussing Zhu Yi and the questions he had posed, General Gu quickly learned from the other students what questions Zhu Yi had raised in class. As he heard what these questions were, he realized that Zhu Yi was someone with a bright future in Wu Dao, as no average Zhou one would ask such questions. Currently, Zhu Yi had only taken a single step in Wu Dao, which was the perfect time to recruit him as a member of their unit. When Zhu Yi would grow stronger, General Gu would no longer be able to interest this talent in joining his unit. Actually, General Gu had investigated Zhu Yi before throwing this olive branch at Zhu Yi. As a local official, it was rather easy for him to pry into an outsider. 
After finding out that Ziyi was saved by Elder Mu, he was almost certain that Ziyi must have been through a fierce revengeful fight. This, however, wasn't newsworthy as revenge fights were carried out left and right in this mortal world. After all, though General Gu had no intention to delve into Ziyi's previous life, he did notice Ziyi's unwillingness to reveal his identity. This was why. He told Ziyi not to worry about any identity problems only by seizing this weakness. Had he successfully persuaded Ziyi into joining his unit, one, an average Joe here, means someone who will never amount to anything in his, her cultivation in. Wu Dao, Wu Dao, I came from the mortal world. Chapter 20 A question about the soul, I'm Yi Zhu. I believe we'll get along like a house on fire. Ziyi gave General Gu a fabricated name. Since he didn't wish to leave any clues for the Zhou family to trace him. Yes, I think so too. I've already prepared a set of clothing and the other necessary equipment for when you officially join us. Hey, why don't you go to the Gladiolus wine restaurant and buy a kettle of green bamboo leaf liquor? General Gu laughed and invited Zuyi. I beg your pardon, Ziyi was slightly confused as to why he should buy wine. After all, he didn't drink alcohol. Okay, let me get to the point. You're a man with an unpredictable potential in Wudao, someone who deserves an experienced teacher to provide effective guidance. Those privileged young men in rich families have personal tutors and whenever they encounter a question, they can just seek their tutor and ask. While your only chance to receive guidance is in the lecture room where both time and questioning opportunities are limited. It's like this because there are tens of other students that you have to share this benefit with. So if you wish to receive more guidance, then you must create the opportunities by yourself. I understand teacher Joe quite well since he has been in our little town for nearly 20 years. Oh, and don't forget, he's an alcoholic. Maybe you can bribe him with a kettle of wine. Actually, I'm almost certain that he's currently drinking in the pavilion of the Dragonbeard River. General Gu analyzed Ziyi's current situation and provided him with some golden advice. How considerate of you, Ziyi exclaimed. As he suddenly ran past General Gu, the dragon, Beard River was a branch of the evil Dragon River, which was named after its location. In the chilly yet limpid water, ripples emerged from time to time because of the breeze, the scenery. On both sides of the river was breathtaking as the trees and flowers were blossoming in bold colors. The most spectacular part was that this scenery, together with the blue sky, was reflected on the river like a gigantic painting. It was quite obvious why teacher Joe would choose this spot to have a drink at. Do ye carry to big kettles of wine? While well, he was overwhelmed by the scenery as he walked along the bumpy road, here, as Ziyi was busy finding where the pavilion was, a hoarse sound caught his attention. Suddenly, he noticed that Teacher Joe was only several meters away, sitting on a rock and waving at him. To Ziyi's astonishment, Teacher Joe was like a hungry lion swooping down on him. Hardly had Ziyi arrived at the rock, or Teacher Joe had already snatched the two. Kettles and unplugged the lid of one of them. HMMM. I've longed for this liquor for a long time. Now, it's like a dream come true. You know, the fragrance of this wine crept into my nose. Before I could even identify who was carrying the wine, it's rather embarrassing for me to tell you that I can't afford to buy this green bamboo leaf liquor with the salary I get from teaching. Anyway, the taste of this wine is heavenly. Teacher Joe imbibed the wine greedily as he spoke to Ziyi, leaving some drops of wine lingering on his beard. Looking at Teacher Joe quaffing like an ox, Ziyi decided not to disturb him. He silently listened to the old man talk as he stood squarely soon. One kettle had been completely emptied, only now did. Teacher Joe realized that there was a young man by his side who was patiently waiting. You're a smart kid. I know exactly why you're doing this. Someone must have told you something about me. Anyway, to kettles, to questions, Teacher Zhao was a straightforward man and he understood that it was most likely that Ziyi was here to find the answers to some questions. I learned from your class that once you've reached the final state, a grateful soul 
as long as your soul was devout. Throughout your cultivation, you'd receive energy from the heavens. My question is, do we truly have souls in our body and if we do, then when will the soul reveal itself? What kind of role does the soul play in the cultivation of Wu Dao? Zi Yi felt. So relieved by letting out these long buried questions, Zi Yi possessed many uncommon abilities, such as ghost seeing eyes, hypersensitivity to any changes, abilities to overcome fatigue, etc. For instance, if he walked in a dangerous forest with many wild beasts, he'd notice from far away the beast was trying to sneak up on him. However, perhaps the most unreasonable part was that he could stay awake for many days and nights while cultivating, even though he might have encountered some physical limits, such as some pain on his body. After several hours of sleep, his body would be recovered and become energetic once again. It were these gifted talents or abilities that had helped him become the current Zhu Yi. However, Zhu Yi was rather confused as he couldn't figure out why maybe the genes in his body were mutated in some way, which would bring him unimaginable power. Or was it possible that his transferred soul had somehow triggered all these extra abilities? All these were just clueless guesses. Since Zhu Yi had never met someone to decode this mystery, he was actually slightly suffering from not knowing the reason behind these abilities. What a weird question. Why do you want to know this? Teacher Joe asked Zhu. Yi, with the disturbed faraway look, right now, he had already finished more than a full kettle of wine and was no longer sober. He seemed especially frustrated by Zhu Yi's unexpected question. Because it wasn't an easy one. I've gotta be in my bonnet about it. Please, Teacher Joe, enlighten me, or else it'll drive me crazy. Do you responded, Well, fine, since I've already accepted your wine. There's no reason for me to dodge your questions. Oh, you have raised three questions, you know? But don't worry, I won't haggle over every ounce. Now for the first question. Do we have souls? The answer is definitely yes. Without souls, what are we, mere walking dead? The second question. When will the soul reveal itself? I guess, what you mean is, when will the soul be independent from the body? Am I right? There are two ways to successfully free your soul. Firstly, once the body is dead, the soul will be released. Secondly, once you break away from your body by cultivating your soul to an extremely high level, many sacred beings have gone through this process. When people are dead, the soul isn't visible. I've heard that only those with yin the opposite of young eyes can see the souls of high ranking. Wu Dao masters, is that true? Di Yi interrupted. He felt that teacher Zhou's answer was too general. What he wanted was a more detailed explanation. Since Di Yi had seen the ghost of Liao Chen, he was confident that he could see souls coming out from other dead bodies. However, he had failed to discover any souls after he had killed Elder Fang, Junior Zhou and the others of the Zhou family. Hey, man, two kettles, two questions, don't break the rules. Teacher, Zhou was angry with his goat-like whiskers slightly. Shivering, he was a rather shrewd old man. One more kettle of wine, okay. To some extent, Di Yu was rather rich with the golden discs he had collected from Junior Zhou's family. He didn't bat an eye when he bought these luxurious wines. Deal. Teacher, Joe smiled with wrinkles crawling all over his bony cheek. If I had half of your diligence, I wouldn't have lost that battle. Okay, never mind. Let's get back to the question. Souls are all spiritual beings. They can't be seen through the naked eye. For those yin eyes, they'll see some souls, but not all of them in this mortal world. The soul of anyone below the state of an ocean of chi is too weak to take shape. Their souls will probably go with the wind instead of revealing itself. For those that have reached the realm of an ocean of chi, their souls are stronger. It is likely that they'll have independent souls. It's worth mentioning that the ghost beings of those cultivators who cultivate the secret method of the soul called warm nourishment of the divine soul, will last in our mortal world even after death.